Psalm 34, 18 tells us that God is close to the brokenhearted. See, the truth is, when we mourn, we have an opportunity to experience God's presence in a unique way that's completely different than regular times in our lives. It's an opportunity, even in great pain, to experience what Paul the Apostle describes as that peace which surpasses all understanding. Now, I cannot explain this, but I can't deny it. All I know is that the Scriptures teach it, and I've experienced it. When my brother Garrett died, the hospital was able to keep him alive artificially for a few days, and we were really thankful for this because it meant that friends and family could come and see him and and say their final goodbyes. And so we each had our moments, saying what needed to be said, embracing him one last time, but eventually the time would come that we had to let him go. And I remember huddling together in the family room after our final goodbyes. We were overwhelmed by our grief. But within moments, my brother Morgan picked up his guitar and he started singing this song by Corey Asbury called, Your Love is Strong. And pretty soon the entire family was singing to God in our grief. The second verse in in this uh, song just... It touched our heart so much. It goes like this. Close enough to hold me near when fear is crippling. Safe enough to be my home when my world is crumbling. Because I have come to know a love stronger than the grave. That in my darkest hour, you raise me up from death to life now. In resurrection power, oh, your love is strong. 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 Together in that room, We sang and we mourned. We sang and we wept. We sang and we grieved. We sang and we processed pain. We sang and we experienced the greatest depth of sorrow we'd ever experienced. And as we sang, we began to experience the tangible, manifest presence of God. I began to experience this truth in real time, that God is close to the brokenhearted. And even though I would wrestle with many questions in the future, in that hospital room, I had everything that I needed. I had the comfort of God's presence in the place of my mourning. See, the truth is this. I will never know the answers to most of my questions. But even if God did answer all of my questions, why this? Why that? Why didn't you save him? Why didn't you help him? Why didn't you heal him? Why didn't you change him? Even if God answered all my questions, the truth of the matter is it wouldn't take away the pain of the loss. And see, for a while I thought that I needed a logical answer in the midst of my mourning, but what I realized is that I didn't need a logical answer. I needed a supernatural experience. I needed to experience God's presence in my pain. God's presence in my mourning. God's presence in my grief. And what if this is part of what Jesus is getting at when he says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. What if in our mourning God knows that we have a unique opportunity to experience his presence like never before, and so he looks at us in our mourning and he calls us blessed? What if there's blessing for those who mourn as we meet God in the mystery? What if there's blessing for those who mourn as we trust him in the tension? What if there's blessing for those who mourn, who choose childlike faith amidst questions? What if God's looking at you, opening yourself up to his presence in the place of mourning and says, blessed are you who mourn, for you will receive comfort. We can experience his presence in our mourning in a way that will mark us forever. Blessed are those who mourn. Yes, blessed are those 
who mourn. Because in your mourning, God's presence comes close to you. 